I V M. Year day one of IPL, DLF paid uh, about forty crores. Come five years, when the rights were coming for renewal, FC paid eighty crores. Tenth year, the for the same title sponsorship slot, Vivo paid a whooping four forty crores. Right now, look at the journey. I mean, these numbers itself have multiplied, and how right? And now imagine situation for the entire industry, mainly people like us. I mean, there are many people like me, right, who are trying to make sense of what's happening around them. Yeah, and so therefore, a lot of principle now just become a serious business. Then. Hello and welcome to the Filter Coffee Podcast. Over the last few weeks, we've all been wide-eyed about the media rights sale for the IPL and how it crossed a whopping six billion dollars. That is sort of close to the GDPs of Bhutan and Fiji put together. While these are media rights, who's going to pay for it eventually? Most probably brands, media platforms, or a combination of these two. Now imagine the number of people it will take to create sponsorships, brand integrations, and infrastructure, and the analytics to measure the ROI for this all. And this is just one deal in one sport. Imagine the kind of human potential it will take to keep the wheels going on this gigantic industry. The business of sports management and sports marketing in India is growing at a tremendous clip, and we are barely getting started. My very dear friend and colleague Vinith Karnik has been a part of this industry for more than a decade and is considered one of the finest minds when it comes to sports marketing in this part of the world. As someone who is part of the industry, Vinith worries a lot about the lack of a big enough talent pool in this country to manage this kind of a growth. So much so that he's written a book on it that will help anyone who wants to be a part of this industry. Vinith's book, titled "The Business of Sports," is not just for aspiring sports marketers but also For people who are passionate and curious about this industry, Vinith's career in advertising is practically the history of sports marketing in India. He's someone who's been right at the center of some of the biggest sporting deals in this part of the world, especially in cricket. I spoke to him about the history of sports marketing in India, what a day in the life of a sports marketer is like, and why is he so bullish about the future of the business of sports in India. Stay with us. We'll be right back on the Filter Coffee Podcast. Everybody, it's been another awesome, great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On the Filter Coffee Podcast, Karthik speaks with actress Aditi Pohankar about the upcoming season two of her Netflix series She. On Cap Gemini's Techipedia series, Sheila Dia talks to Ashish Sharma, senior director of Automotive India, Cap Gemini Invent. They discuss the role of electric vehicles in promoting sustainability. On All Things Policy, the Takshashila folk discuss the ongoing negotiations between Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan and the Pakistan Army. On Ek Chuski Finance, Priyanka lists down the seven financial promises every bride and groom must make before getting married. And on the Hans Vani, he tells the story Mukti. It explores the many social prejudices faced by women. We got some exciting news for you. IBM Podcast has just launched its merch line, and you should check it out now. Head over to the IBM Podcast website. That's ibmpodcast dot com, and click on the shop tab to check out our first collection of T shirts. Also, do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows, for that matter, please do tell a friend. That really does help. Don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on, and also do remember you can check out a number of our shows on YouTube. You can go to ibmpodcast.com/slash/youtube to get a list of the channels that we are keeping active. We also are doing a small listener survey. If you can go to ibmpodcast.com/slash/survey to fill this out, it'll just take a few minutes, and it really helps us out. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week: SBI Life Insurance, Apne Liye, Apno Ke Liye. Jupiter, a digital banking app. Cap Gemini, get the future you want. Intel V Pro, built for business, and Intel Future Banana, wonderful with Intel-powered laptops. Welcome to the Filter Coffee Podcast, Vinit. How are you doing? Thanks, Karthik. I think uh, it's fantastic to be on Filter Coffee. Uh, we've been planning this for a while, and uh, and what an opportune time! Yeah, perfect. 
feeling good usually i am extremely disappointed at uh, you know friends who i know very very well people i work with when it takes us a long time to record but in this case i think the timing is perfect i am very happy that even though we've been talking about this for more than a year we didn't end up uh, doing this episode earlier because this coincides with the launch of uh, your book the business of sports which i am and the entire industry is extremely excited about before we go anywhere else talk to us about how the idea of the book came from when did it originate and what was the journey for you yeah karthik actually it's a long story okay so i will try to try to keep it as short as possible but before i get there i'll just pull back a bit and just give you a bit of a background in terms of how sports happened to me in the first place because that's also very very important for most of our listeners maybe to know so basically i am a media professional okay so uh, never planned from a academic standpoint to be anywhere around the so called pop culture or, or sports in particular okay so i mean a normal media professional ad sales media planning did one a radical uh, thing by quitting core media in 2000 and, and moving to the entertainment side of the business which is basically filmmaking worked with padmana telefilms for about 5 years executive produced about four movies for them uh, headed their mumbai office and that time it was 2.0 for them and that's how the entire content journey began learned a lot from a production standpoint uh, distribution standpoint those days production distribution exhibition used to be three different verticals three different sets of companies and so on and so forth and eventually in 2006 group m happened yeah joined group m in 2006 uh, that time the e of esp was the pivot of the whole business everybody loved it entertainment part of the esp business was something which was most talked about most famous and embraced by our colleagues internally and our clients who we used to work with so if you look at early stages in 2005 2006 types you would see me very popular in the in the entertainment space is very active in media talking about how brands can leverage the platform of entertainment so on and so forth cut to 2007 okay um, suddenly we get a call from uh, bcci and uh, we are told that uh, you know uh, they are starting cricket league and a t20 format which we all were very new with right i mean we had no clue i mean we had just won the world cup and stuff like that so actually the journey began there where we had no clue what we are getting into we had no knowledge repository so to say but yeah we had a very strong media background we understood marketing and we had a reputation of building brands and therefore the whole ipl day zero happened now when when we started work everything for of for us was extremely new and we learned each and every tricks of the trade on the job over the last 16 years now you are sitting at the beginning of ipl so there is right. no concept of a sporting league at least an official sporting league at this point absolutely and the reason you know you're playing a role in this is because as group m you know the organization manages the investments of some of the largest brands in the world and in india what were those initial days like to even understand sponsorships and uh, because there's no precedent right how, how did you go about doing it so sponsorship we had some kind of a background because we used to keep working with india bilateral series okay so sponsorship background was there but very very little i mean two or three deals in a year kind of a thing yeah but what was the league the word itself was new right franchise people wanting to sell teams people buying teams the whole auction episodes that we see today auctions are a part of everybody come january looks for ipl team auctions right because we had exposure to english premier league where there used to be a direction window i mean that was something which we had a little bit of exposure with but never ever saw it on national television actually in a in a ballroom of a five star hotel round tables people bidding for players people bidding for teams very all these words also were were very new to us right now we kept going because energies were very high i mean everything was uh, uh, was only growing and it was massive amount of traction traction first season of ipl and and boom it was it was absolutely halfway in it was it was the biggest property biggest television content that india would have ever seen it was all done on day in year 1 right as when we started moving along 2008 2009 slowly steadily more advertisers start coming in uh, the whole marketing piece within the sport ecosystem 
uh, started coming in and so and so forth. So we had no clue. We learned everything on the job. So over the next, and what happened is three years after IPL, so first year IPL happened in India, second year it went to South Africa, it came back to India in the third year, right? And by then, there was a massive amount of interest uh, within the advertising community. Uh, franchise owners were had, had learned their own ways because it was very new to them as well. So by third or the fourth year, it was a very well-oiled machinery, absolutely raring to grow, right? And the kind of, and if you see, I mean, look at it. No, I mean, the first season, if DLF paid uh, 40 crores for the title sponsorship, okay, by the end of their five-year term, when Pepsi took it over, Pepsi paid exactly double of that price, okay, which is 80 crores. What is the value of the sponsorship today? So I'll just give you the hard facts and hard numbers, right? Yeah. Year day one of IPL, DLF paid... Uh, about 40 crores. Come five years when the rights were coming for renewal, Pepsi paid 80 crores. Tenth year, the for the same title sponsorship slot, Vivo paid a whooping 440 crores. Good Lord. Right? Wow. Now, look at the journey. I mean, these numbers itself have multiplied and how, right? And now imagine situation for the entire industry, mainly people like us. I mean, there are many people like me, right? Who are trying to make sense of what's happening around them. Yeah? And so therefore, a lot of principle, now this became a serious business then, right? We had lots and lots of learnings uh, coming from the West in the way leagues like NBA are managed, leagues like NFL are managed, leagues like Premier League in the, in the Europe are managed. But th- what we realized is those learnings were not enough because from a maturity standpoint, India was still very, very young and wanting to get there. So the kind of experiences we had and wanted to offer to our fans and our clients were very different compared to a matured market, uh, which is an American market or a European market. So when we tried to do a little bit of a research to see what can we do, how can we better our offer, we had nothing, absolutely nothing to refer to, which was India centric. Because we had just begun the journey, okay? And and I keep saying, I mean, we, we are not a sporting nation yet. We are getting there because IPL is just a 15-year-old league. And uh, I believe 15 years is too short a time for us to uh, call ourselves a sporting nation. So while IPL was a massive success, suddenly what happened by 2012, 2013, we saw multiple different sports coming with uh, their version of uh, IPL. So we had an ISL, which was a football league. We had a PKL, which was a Kabaddi league. Then we have 10 plus leagues now. Yeah. But what we realized is the kind of people we need, the kind of readiness we need from a younger generation who wants to come and work in this sector, okay, was not that much. Right. And that was one point I said it was we should have had something from a curriculum standpoint where sports could have been a part of our learning, if not at a school level, at a, at a university level for sure. That mm-hmm. was one thing. We had no time to breathe. Suddenly, there were 10 plus Premier Leagues between 2013 to 2015-16. And the industry was growing at an exponential pace. I mean, uh, yeah, I just rattled out some numbers from an IPL perspective. There are similar numbers from all the sports fund. What happened parallelly is a lot of people started sports academies, sports education uh, programs and so on and so forth, right? Mm. And they started inviting people like me to come and interact with their, their students. Okay. And, uh, and we started going to various different colleges as a part of our marketing communication exercise. We were talking to them. What I realized personally at that point in time is that there is sports marketing is not as different as it's made up to be. The principles mm. of marketing remain the same. And that's something which we have learned, right? Now, the question is, how do we apply principles of marketing to sports marketing was the journey we had to cover. And that's when I met a very, very interesting gentleman, an ex-Indian cricketer. Uh, His name is Nilesh Kulkarni, founder director of uh, IISM. IISM stands for International Institute for Sports Management. And uh, I met him, I met his uh, wife. They worked together, Rasika Kulkarni, as a fabulous couple uh, and a fabulous team. And I went to their uh, institute in Jahin College. They used to operate out of Jahin College those days. And I realized that there are so many students who have actually enrolled exclusively for a sports marketing, sports management program. Wow. Yeah. And the kind of passion I saw in them, the kind of questions that came from uh, from their end, 
I started spending more time with them. Yeah, because obviously we were also interested because we also wanted students and people who are mainly curious and interested in making their career into sports, right? And in that journey of actually being a practitioner, working in the business of sport, talking to students as marketing professionals or as sports marketing students, I realized a massive amount of need gap to create programs and curriculum which will make these students industry ready. And in that process, Nilesh kept pushing me, saying that you need to do more, you need to do more. Obviously, we have day jobs to do, so we obviously couldn't spend too much time. And we said, yeah, yeah, kuch karenge, kuch karenge. In that whole uh, thing of kuch karenge, time kept passing because, I mean, uh, you know how our corporate lives are. I mean, you hardly have time to breathe, right? I mean, forget about spending time. I mean, I would spend not more than about two or three days uh, in a year with those students. But somewhere that, that thing was always in my mind and it always touched my heart that we need to do something which will help them. Uh, come out and deliver to people like us and the entire ecosystem, right? It will eventually, the ecosystem needs to grow. The sports as a business needs to grow. And that's when uh, Karthik uh, pandemic happened. Uh, come 2020, uh, we had coronavirus hitting all of us. And suddenly one fine day before even we realized what hit us, uh, we were in lockdown. First three, four months were terrible. Right, mm. because we were figuring out. I mean, our entire business, like for example, ESP stands for Entertainment, Sports, and Partnerships. Uh, right. Entertainment. There was no shoots happening. There were no movie releases. There was absolute blackout. All the content was being played, which was repeats. Sports obviously was uh, not there. IPL was. If I, I still remember the date in 2020. IPL was supposed to start on 29th of March, which eventually started somewhere in October. Yeah. So we had nothing. I mean, uh, we were all figuring out what to do. We did a lot mm. of virtual things and all of that. But we had a lot of downtime at that point in time. Okay, We had a lot of downtime to think, what more can you do to make this work? Okay, Because we were completely stuck, right? And that's when I, and Nilesh kept pushing. Nilesh kept pushing, boss, kuch karte, kuch karte. I said, yeah, if not now, when? Okay, So I said, boss, let me do one thing. Mm. Let me start writing. So that time, honestly... We never said that this will be a book. Yeah. But let me start writing my thoughts. Okay. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. So I got, I mean, I took about two to three months to come up with 10 things that I believe is something which I should be talking to the academicians, the student community, to the current practitioners and future leaders who will possibly help us catapult this business to another level. So when I wrote those 10 points, it was about 50 odd, 50, 70 pages. Okay. I realized that whatever I have written is something which I have learned in my, in my university, the basic principles of marketing, right? Hmm. And what I am right now going to do is applying those principles of marketing to the business of sport. That's when things took a bit of a serious turn. I one day discussed it over a call like this with Dinesh saying that this is what I have written and what do you think? And he obviously was super excited and he felt that uh, this is uh, a moment where we need to just discuss this and possibly scale this up to a level where this can be offered as a huge value add to the people who we are talking about, right? Right. And that's when he said that or lick. Or Lick Miller, I'm not a writer by profession, right? I mean, or Lick, I can write. But so basically, then that draft from 50, 70 pages became about 100 pages. Okay. And that's when I said, okay, well, this is all I can write. Okay. Because right. my, so our, our day-to-day -day communication language, verbal communication or, or written communication is very different than a, than a book language. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and that's when, so. So this was around the IPL time around October is when my 100 pages were done. And this is when he said that was now let's give it a shape and see where it still there was no book. And we were thinking about a course. It was, a, it was mm. like a course material. Okay. Right. It was still not a book in the in the horizon. Okay. And then once we deep dive, we said the basic principles, the moment those pages kept going, we suddenly said, now this is a, this is something which potentially could be of great use as a reference material for people interested to knowing about 
into the business of sports from a sports marketing perspective. So somewhere around end of 2020 is when we said that this potentially could be a book. Hmm. So that's where the journey came. And then obviously I took help from uh, some people to make those 100 pages more uh, book worthy from a language perspective. Popular Prakashan came on board, our publish- publisher. They had a very different view on, on the writing. So they helped edit a lot of things and stuff like that. And finally, it became a nice 282 pages book, which we were very comfortable uh, releasing because uh, we are extremely confident that the material that is there in the book is definitely something which the country doesn't have. And what mm. you should know, a unique thing about the book is, this is the first book by an Indian for the Indian market. Wow. Okay. We did a lot of research, a lot of reference materials, but all of them are books uh, written in a completely different world, completely different ecosystem, completely different economical condition. Hmm. Yeah. And that's when we said that uh, this can be as bigger and better as we can imagine. Uh, and that's the landmark we are extremely happy and proud about. Uh, and we believe that Indian sensibilities are so different, Karthik, that uh, what works in the US or what works in the Europe necessarily does not work in work in India because the life cycle of our sports fans, the journey of our sports fan, maybe in case of cricket, it is over three or over three decades, but in most of the other sports, it's less than 10 years. Yeah. Yeah? And therefore, a uh, lot needs to be done uh, from a maturity standpoint, from a progression standpoint, from a learning standpoint. We can hmm. take some inspirations, adopt some learnings, but we need to create original content, uh, which will help our sports uh, ecosystem, our federations, our government, our talent, our athletes, and our people who want to make a career out of this. So that was the thinking uh, behind it. So to summarize, so what I have learned in the last 15 years uh, in the world of sport, what I have learned over about 25 years in the world of marketing is something I have tried to package through this book, which will help the next generation to be better professionals, better industry professionals, whenever they are out from their business schools or their academic careers. That's the spirit in which this book has been written and released. It's fascinating. I think the the story itself is is really fascinating because we've spoken about this for a long time and because you know we, we work together. I'm I'm sort of familiar with the kind of work that you do and your team does with brands and um, and rights owners, etc. But uh, I can only imagine, you know, for those who are outside this ecosystem, how important this book will be, because there is nothing like this at this point, you know, like like you said, nothing from an Indian perspective, nothing that goes into the business of sports itself. Right? Uh, at this point, Vineet, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, from for someone who's listening to this, who's not from the advertising industry, right? Firstly, they might be surprised to know that sports marketing is a thriving career, right? Which has a, an institute and a course by itself, right? Some people might know, some people might not know. Right? If you can explain what all goes on in a day in the life, you know, of a, of a sports marketer, what are the different skills he or she brings to the table? Oh, that's absolutely interesting question. I'm glad you you brought that in, Karthik, because this is exactly what is something which we need to talk about. And build on it, okay? Because as I keep saying it, we are absolutely new to this space. It's a 15-year-old industry mm. and 15 years is, is is nothing, right? So, yeah, just to answer your question now, here, a typical sports marketeer has got multiple different hats. It, it depends upon which hat are you wearing at what point in time. So, just to give you a perspective, a sports marketeer in a, in a federation like a BCCI uh, or, a, or a AIFF, Okay, would do a very different job because he is building a sport bottom up. Okay, uh, he would be uh, working very closely with the talent. He would be working very closely with the athletes and trying to create a program which is very very sustainable and scalable over a period of time. Let me take a cricketing example, which is going to be very easier for most of our listeners to uh, appreciate and and adopt. Yeah. So if you, so everybody thinks that IPL is when uh, the big mullah started coming in to the sport and uh, BCCI started making top dollars. The answer is yes. Okay. Yes. IPL actually catapulted the entire, entire business model and, and took it to, to a huge scale, which we all are aware about. Hmm. But what we miss 
is the journey towards ipl to me the journey towards ipl actually began somewhere in the mid 70s or late 70s okay the proof of concept of that journey is the 1983 world cup hmm. okay what we what we tend to miss is the huge structure which bcci has created uh, across the country at a grassroots level we talk about grassroots without understanding what grassroots means so today there are various different 20 plus sports uh, associations which are affiliated to bcci so for example mumbai cricket association hmm. is associated to bcci right and then there is a kca then there is a, a, a dgca and there is a, a, a tamil nadu cricket board and so on and so forth right now these are all state federations who actually do the hard work to create those ranji trophies those devda trophies those irani trophies the scouting of that talent those academies and so so and so forth so for example if you are sports marketer in a ipl team or an isl team okay your primary objective would be to to look after and develop a good team yeah a great marketing program mm. which which means a constant social media which is the most important point from a fan engagement standpoint yeah creating content which fuels your social media sports marketing which is sports sponsorship directly linked to it so you yeah. have got 10 uh, jersey slots to sell as a team marketer so these are some of the areas which would be needed skill sets would be needed in a sports franchise hmm. now hmm. if you look at agencies like us the skills sets would differ because their sports analytics would be an added layer i would add because eventually we are at the on the consulting side of the business so lot of uh, team owners lot of potential prospective team owners would want to come to us looking at the roi approach can you double click a little bit on sports analytics for those of you uh, for those of the listeners who are not familiar with that yeah sure so sports analytics basically means various different data points from a business of sports sports standpoint in terms of if i have to pay say 100 crores uh, for a sponsorship what hmm. would that 100 crores give me in return from a return of investment standpoint there is a huge amount of science that goes behind it huge amount of data that goes behind it data predominantly comes from television viewership it basically comes from the various different business models and so on and so forth having said that if you are a potential team owner where you want to own a team in ipl or you want to own a team mm. in isl or a pkl what would be your roi because typically from a structure standpoint the business model is very different the business model of a team owner is very different than a brand marketer because brand marketer may not look at return on investment from the income standpoint but from a consumer standpoint hmm. because advertisers keep chasing consumer eyeballs That's correct their primary job is to reach out to the target audience and sell the product at the end of the day hmm. Hmm. that's their job but the job of a, a marketer in a federation is to sell media rights is to sell center, center sponsorship in fact we have been talking on a perfect day because on this sunday 12th of june the biggest media rights uh, engagement is going to happen so i mean the five to six players who are going to be bidding for the next five seasons of ipl mm. that mathematics and that analytics is very very different right so right. then you look at it from a from a 10 year or a 20 year window so you mm. obviously will have to look at various different ways you want to uh, simulate a pnl over the next 5 to 10 years what could possibly be the media rights cycle mm. or uh, valuation in 2027 or in 2032 is the basis on which today people are going to be investing right so some bit of a future gazing so so these this is what i mean by by sports analytics sports analytics is different for different stakeholders you know as you're talking many it's fascinating for me to listen to it even though you know i'm familiar with a lot of this thing is that a regular sports marketer has so many shades so many different skill sets imbibed in him or her right like there, there is an analytics piece that one needs to be familiar with i'm assuming there is a there is a huge negotiation piece one needs to be at the top of his or her game when it comes to making deals an awareness of of sport as an ecosystem and overall an awareness of brand and then you know and of course an awareness of uh, every sport as a as an entrepreneurial venture because at the end of the day uh, things have to be profitable isn't it right. so it's a it is a lot of skills coming together into one profession isn't it you mentioned multiple times right yeah. like this um, how things are different you know outside you know, for example for a market like us and how things are different in india right can you can you bring that to to life with, with, with say an example or two 
Okay, simple example which is relatable is uh, in India we all know that merchandising is a big pain point. Hmm. Fifteen years of IPL, okay, we we saw Adidas, Puma, Nike come in very excited in the first three five years. Today we hardly see a Puma somewhere. We see an Adidas here and there, but the biggest sporting brands are not investing in India from a merchandising standpoint. Right? Why is that? Correct. Because now exactly the reason why the basic principles of Pestle, Swat, Etop, because legally our laws are not as sharp from a counterfeit standpoint. There is so much of counterfeit happening in the country. Merchandising revenue is hardly anything. Ah. Right. So this is what I. But if you look at uh, globally, merchandising is uh, the third largest revenue stream in the world. I mean, the first largest obviously is the media right. Second is obviously sponsorship, and third is uh, merchandising. Now that doesn't exist in India. Hmm. Yeah. So what do we do about it? Now we need to start doing about it on day one. Right. We can't suddenly say, "Okay, boy, tomorrow I will write X number of dollars on merchandise." It won't happen. We have to work hmm. towards it. Yeah. yeah, we all know that gate revenue, match day revenue, is a serious business worldwide. Match day revenue is significant in IPL, but it's not great in most of the emerging sports. So what do we do? What is the importance of match day revenue? How does it fuel my business? How should I go about it? Hmm. Why is it so important? These are some of the differences which are huge in our market. Now subscription revenue. Yeah. Now we all know that subscription revenue is not that big a revenue in India. Hmm. India is predominantly a award market or advertiser-driven yeah. market. You mean subscription for streaming services? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So why is that so? How are things positioned there? How did they arrive to uh, a model like that? What should you do? Theoretically, academically, Karthik, we had nothing to refer to. So hmm. whatever I'm talking to you about is sheer experiences, and experiences comes. With lot of failures before we succeed, hmm. so you need to you need to pull back, fail, learn, unlearn, relearn, eventually to get to a point where you say that yes, now this is a model which I can uh, stick to for some years before I evolve that model as well. So hmm. these are some of the aspects which were pain points for me in my journey, and that's when I thought that I should give back my knowledge, my understanding to the next generation. so that the problems that i faced personally i'm not saying i it will completely diminish or people will be absolutely ready but they will have some reference material to go by which mm-hmm. someone like me didn't have you know uh, the, clearly the book is intended for people you know who are serious or even curious about uh, sports marketing right yeah but for others what can they expect from this book what are the other aspects of the book That, let's say, for example, I'm very interested in sports in India, but I, I'm not planning to be a sports marketer per se. Uh, is this book still relevant to me? So the way I would take this question, Karthik, is uh, the primary audience is students and academicians. Okay, the secondary audience is the current practitioners and curious sports fans who would want to know more about the way the business of sports functions. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, they are. crores and crores of fans who watch a sport on tv or on streaming platforms on and consume it in various different shapes and forms i'm sure there will be many questions in their mind ke ye kaise ho raha how is it happening hmm. okay so right from the first question to maybe the fifth question this book would address most of their doubts in terms of how the sales happen how marketing happens how promotion happens how a media plan plan is built okay how, how what media how what is media rights why is it so important what are platforms how to evaluate hmm. platforms basics okay so just to give you a, a a future plan on this one this is the first book and i'm looking at at least two more versions of it a a, a series of three books okay which will double click the principles of what we are talking about uh, in the first one in the mm. second and third so if first is very very theoretical the second book in the series would be some of the live examples of how these principles were knowingly or unknowingly adopted by us over the last 15 17 years mm. the third would be a culmination of first and two where we would talk about lot of case studies because by then we would have had a 20 year old history 
and an ambitious plan for the next 10 years that we all are embarking and we you, i mean everybody is aware uh, that government of india is putting serious thrust on sports they are extremely ambitious we are talking about uh, the under 17 girls world football world cup for this year we are talking about um, having an ambition of hosting uh, junior olympics we have an ambition of hosting fifa world cup someday so this there is going to be lot of work to be done here Mm. these principles towards this journey and how can you ramp up or step up towards achieving these goals is something which will help a reader if he or she picks this book up yeah you know i just want to go beyond the book right itself into some of the things that you are you are able to see from your vantage point right uh, this is one of the uh, one of the big takeaways from the book right is uh, in your words you know you are saying that you know over the next decade india will become a super power in sports right and uh, just to put this you know in terms of numbers presently correct me if i'm wrong you know it, it's probably about a 1.2 billion market right uh, which is right. roughly around 9500 crores correct. in 2021 and uh, this itself is a is a sizable large market by any measure one would think right but your forecast for sports in this country is very very bullish right and at the same time you spoke about some of the challenges we have right which is in terms of people coming to stadiums and uh, probably the the experience that you have on stadiums we have a lot of lot of challenges in our in our sports there is sports. one there is one chapter hmm. on infrastructure karthik okay because hmm. how hmm. important is sports in- infrastructure okay hmm. how important is to f- get a fan feel comfortable to come to the stadium again and again Hmm. so there's one full deep dive on it there's one a dedicated chapter on that right what do you think you know in your in your opinion what are the two or three things that give you a lot of hope when it comes to the future of sports in india in spite of all of these challenges the first ho- big hope is the kind of thrust the government of india is putting on on sports uh, if you would hmm. have seen uh, over the last 5 years our sports budget has doubled hmm. okay so very clearly uh, at a sports ministry level at a, at a prime minister of india level they have very clearly called out that sports is one of the priority areas and they would want to build it so that's one hope because it's very important for any country to have the premiership uh, premiership completely aligned and invested if that country has to rise in the world of sports mm. so that's mm. one second a huge amount of investment that our corporates are doing in the world of sports okay the kind of investment startups are doing the kind of investments reliance foundation is doing the kind of investment jsw sports is doing adani sports is doing the more and more large corporates coming and investing in sports investing in the olympic movement investing in the metal tallies of india that's the second reason why i am bullish third and the most important reason is we have got a massive amount of support from our uh, our 135 crore people who are die hard sport fans so if you look at any sports today whether it's football kabaddi cricket of course you look at any of the olympic sports boxing you look at neeraj chopra these people have actually come from the grassroots right so the kind right. of work that is happening at a grassroots level the kind of uh, work that's happening at the scouting level is is tremendous and it's a no brainer to believe that in 135 crores people you have definitely have Hundred medalists who are who are world beaters, okay. So government support, corporate support, hundred, two hundred top medalists over the next ten years. We are world beaters, Karthik. It's a no brainer. Come what may, we have to reach there. No, how can how can India have only seven medals? It's not possible. I yeah. just don't want to believe it. Only I just can't. I can't accept that that score. Hmm. If we keep doing the right things, okay. i think there is a, a ray of hope yeah uh, that by end of this decade we will have a we will have a serious contenders for most of the metal tallies in the world that that's these are the three points yeah and we are seeing the change right like absolutely you know the investment that was made 7 8 years back in badminton is is giving you dividends now absolutely it, the investment made in shooting and boxing is giving you dividends now and uh, you you're right like in, in 10 years if all of the initiators were to eventually Pay up. Yeah, we'll we'll be in a 
exciting exciting space right absolutely so what do you tell you know one of, one of the things that i'm really tired of hearing right is is whenever people talk about the future of sports in india everyone says yaar cricket is the goliath here it lead up everything else it will cannibalize every other market of course you know there, there is a bit of element of truth in it as probably one of the biggest experts of the of sport in india how do you answer that question so i look at it a little differently yaar okay mm. so i think we as indians know we are we are quite apologetic about cricket doing so well I don't see I don't see the reason why why should we apologetic about cricket doing so well cricket is our number one sport and let it remain our number one sport for the next 100 years what is any what is anybody's problem i don't get it right right i am saying that just because cricket is big does not mean that you don't have people following football there is so much happening in world of football i mean you look at any data whether it's a television data or a grassroots data you have got so many kids today the younger generation following football unfortunately they follow european football at this point in time mm. but the time is not wrong we have seen a massive difference between in the performance of our isl teams between year 1 to year last right now yeah. obviously you can't expect them to play like uh, uh, real madrid and uh, and arsenal in 5 years no give them some time okay and if you have seen that improvement i'm sure they will do better and once you i mean if 1983 was the was the point of that enlightened change in in the world of cricket hmm. it will happen at some stage in in football or in in, in multiple sports today badminton we are world beaters right yeah. we are right up there everybody has a india strategy right all your opponents do have a india strategy they bloody well have a india strategy Yeah. and i have i have no doubts that over a period of time uh, we will have a similar kind of a performance in most of the other sports hmm hmm beautiful you know this branching off to the another aspect of the book and as well as your career vinith i am a firm believer that uh, pop culture is fundamentally fueled directly or indirectly by marketing money right, right. whether it is music cinema absolutely or sports or sports especially right you know all the numbers that we are talking about eventually directly or indirectly will be bankrolled by a brand's marketing spend right especially when we talk about sports why should a brand be really excited about being a part of it what do you tell the biggest brands in the country or in the world when you when you handhold them and bring them into sports and you've done this so many times in your career super so you have answered the question actually partially okay so you said pop culture right so what do you mean by pop culture okay pop culture is something which is followed by people okay which is passionately aspired by people so sports allows interactions with consumers it doesn't interrupt the consumer journey mm. so while you are a part of a sporting property whether it is cricket or football or badminton or hockey you are interacting with them there are today it's a multiple way of communications with the social media and the digital ecosystem coming i mean completely changing the whole uh, all dynamics the way we consume things right with the 5g roll out the the way the mobile phone market has has been penetrated in india it's a multi dimensional communication okay it's no more one size fits all it's no more yeah. i am sitting in front of a television set i am served an ad i have to watch that ad today lot of things uh, are possible okay so first point is it's a medium to interact with your consumer it's a medium which is guaranteeing you appointment viewing today mm. i would like to say that there is no other content okay arguably which promises you x amount of people x x amount of timing on a particular day guaranteed sports is the only appointment viewing that's possible mm. third sports perhaps is one of the few areas left in the ecosystem which is which has passionate followers a die hard manchester united fan will do anything and everything to watch that match tonight a die hard you look at what happened uh, when messi moved his uh, club to psg yeah that one night okay i spoke about merchandise aspect a while back on this show look at what happened and the kind of jerseys puma sold on that one night made it world record right that's about passionate fans so again these are the three aspects one is interaction appointment viewing and a high amount of passion that is involved in the world of sports which possibly increases 
your awareness, your trauma, your consideration, which eventually leads to sale from a product and service standpoint. Beautiful. You know, I want to end the episode with a very, very personal question, right? Um, uh, having had the pleasure of knowing you over, over the last many years, you're one of the very few people in the industry who understands the entertainment industry as well as the sports industry deeply, right? Very few people straddle both these worlds, right? Even celebs don't. But I've also known one other thing with you, which is you're passionate about the business of entertainment, right? You're, you're passionate about the, the business of sports, right? I'm not, you know, in the last many years that, that we've sat down and, and, and spoken for hours together. It's not so much about the sports itself, you know, the nuances of, hey, this straight drive or this square cut or that ball uh, reverse swinging. It's more about the, the business, which is, which is always what has like, excited you. What is it about sports business that continues to keep you excited and motivated to do what you do? The sheer challenges that come with it, Karthik. Hmm. It's very easy to be a sports fan and I can speak about hours about uh, Sachin's cover drive and uh, Virat's uh, square cut and Dhoni's helicopter shot, right? But eventually, I'm not a sportsman, right? I'm a, I'm a sports fan, right? By being a sports fan, okay, I can't do much from a contribution standpoint. I mean, I, at best, I will contribute to the viewership uh, number on TV or on a streaming platform, okay? So I always think that if I have to give back something, okay, what is it? What is that one thing which will differentiate me from, from most of the others? Okay. And uh, therefore the need gap, and again, it happened by default. I'm not at all saying that it was planned. It was not planned. It happened by default. It happened because there was such a big, massive uh, need gap and headroom that you don't have an option, but to just jump and try to swim. Right. So what I realized is if, if you don't understand the business of sport, no, then there is no sport. Because how much ever great talent you may have, if you don't make sure it reaches out to its target consumer or to the fans, it will not have sustainability and scalability. Mm. Okay, A great match between Carolina Marina or PV Sindhu will go unnoticed if it's not broadcasted yeah. or streamed, right? Now, if it's not broadcasted or streamed, I will not be able to see it. Now, what is that one link between the great match and a fan who's seeing that match? Is the business of sport, right? Yeah. And somewhere I thought that I can never be a talent in this life at least. I cannot play at the world stage. At best, I can be a wannabe cricketer or a baddie player in the backyard. So, might as well have some contribution to the business of sport and be the enabler between the talent and the fan. That's the way I would position why am I so passionate about the business of sport. Brilliantly put. You've now spent in sports more than a decade and a half, right? And um, uh, there is not a forum where you've not been invited whenever it comes to the confluence of the business of sports and brands. Right? You know, if you were to look back, what are some of those most exciting moments for you, uh, you know, in, in this journey? That, that's my first part of my question. Second part of the question is outside, you know, what, what, what do you have done? What do you, what do you admire in, in the world of sports? Which franchise, which brands work do you admire? So two parts to my question. Okay, so I will answer the first part because second part will have a lot of bias and I'm still a working professional and I would not <laughs> want to take sides because eventually dhanda hai. Yeah. So, actually, if I have to look at your first question, I've actually enjoyed each and every day in my life over the last 15 years. There has not been one moment which I can call out. I'll tell you why. Because if you look at my WhatsApp status, no, it hasn't changed for the last, I don't know how many years. It says exciting times. Because there's so much to learn. There is so much to, to fail and so much to succeed. That there has been... Not even a single dull moment. Yeah. I mean, you started with IPL, you started with TV, you went to streaming, digital, social. Today, you're talking about NFTs, metaverse, fan tokens, esports. I mean, where do you have time to even think about that moment? That moment you live every single day. And that's what I keep telling my team and people who I talk to, that I have a reason to wake up every day morning. 
and that reason is so exciting because i have to do something new every day i have to fail every day for me to succeed every day right so there is no one moment eureka moment which says ke that day on that date when this happened that was the moment no that moment is i've lived that moment i'm extremely hmm. uh, privileged happy and blessed to say that i have been a part of a journey where i had to shape things up okay when nothing existed and where in this world who is going to give you that opportunity to possibly do it from the scratch so yeah. i think it's a it's a blessing it's a privilege and i have embraced it with open hands and lived every moment of my life beautiful and so i mean from a brand perspective i think it's going to be very common and cliched so obviously the kind of work um, nike has done over the period of time the work adidas has done over the period, all these sporting brands i think what i what i admire is the way tennis as a sport in india we speak very little about the sport the yeah. way tennis has been built by the four grand slams wimbledon in particular french open i think i think the way they have created that premiumness for the sport uh, okay that is something which i admire i admire the way bcci has structured and grown cricket as a sport hmm. okay i have admired the way sunil gavaskar kapil dev created historical moments in our lives uh, followed by sachin tendulkar obviously who i have grown with uh, watching and following i i think the way sachin has inspired my generation i think you will have to give that very very high credibility and an advantage because that was the glue which kept us going following the sport at all points in time yeah and mm-hmm. then of course you had saurav you had rahul you had uh, dhoni uh, and today obviously virat and you have a huge bench strength of of young kids who are going to be just uh, helping the sport go even further from a business of sports standpoint if you see i have i have seen I've, i've looked up a lot and studied a lot uh, researched a lot about the way jagmohan dalmia actually built up a bcci in early 90s mm. yeah i think uh, that was phenomenal the way lalit modi in the initial days the way he visualized and gave the vision for ipl yeah right. so these are various different uh, uh, ways uh, you have looked up to your sporting stars icons over the period of time yeah awesome we need to usually end the episode by asking our guest what uh, he or she is watching reading or listening to these days what is what has kept you entertained or infotained recently so recently as in for the la- i mean i hooked i got hooked on to the uh, the ott content only during pandemic i mean i was not one of those uh, binge watchers uh, binge watchers uh, till till march of 2020 so yeah i mean lot of lot of content uh, but i'm more of a indian content guy i mean while mm. i i watch lot of uh, content that is uh, produced in the west but i'm more of a local person very very desi guy love to watch programming which is created in my language which is in in my country so very very desi by that standards yeah of course and 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 i i watch all sports don't miss out on the opportunity to watch anything live yeah i mean that that's it yeah i mean that's all the time that i that i have honestly if you ask me do you like 83 of course 83 of course because <laughs> 83 i have lived that moment um, way back in 83 in fact uh, it's produced by a very very dear friend of mine and uh, i was a part of the production journey very very curiously wanting to know what is what are you doing and i i love the film i know there are a lot of criticism lot of different point of views people have but to me i am not looking at it from a purist standpoint the story was required to be told yeah. and it's told i'm i'm happy about it and i'm told so why it's such a celebration i, I was bawling through the film like right. i was, I was, I was right. I was crying laughing for the first a, time for the first yeah. time I saw Kapil Dev scoring 175 did you see it before yeah exactly <laughs> exactly the imaginary <laughs> the imaginary 175 isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you and it was the the match production was so real that you right absolutely this absolutely. is the footage that we've been waiting for <laughs> to me i have seen kapil dev scoring 175 period <laughs> <laughs> brilliant yeah yeah, yeah. extraordinary minute thank you so much good luck with the book and uh, we can't wait for the for the other two editions to follow yeah good 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 thanks, luck thanks, with everything that you uh, are attempting thanks karthik for having me on this show filter coffee rocks uh, all the best to you for your future shows and an absolute pleasure to be talking to you on this show yeah thank you cheers cheers bye
If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcasts.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to me, I am the underscore Karthik. That's Karthik with an H on Twitter and filter underscore coffee. That's coffee with a K on Instagram. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IVM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IVM swag. So do fill out those surveys. Don't you think that if everyone around you is getting smart, you better be smarter? Hey there, I'm the traveling professor Siddharth Deshmukh and I'm back with season two of my podcast to make you smarter. Smarter with Sid. What's this season's focus about? Well, it's about 10 minute nuggets that will make you stand out at work. It's time to go from smart to smarter. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday and become smarter with Sid.